All right, so we've been learning and discussing how to name ionic compounds, right? Ionic compounds. And let's have a, a little bit of review. Um, we know that ionic compounds, first of all, the definition of an ionic compound for us is kind of has kind of changed. It used to be that the definition was it's a compound that contains a metal, which is not a bad definition because you can identify an ionic compound by seeing that it has a metal in it. However, um, we've grown up a little bit and we've learned about what ions are. And so now it's, it's more effective or it's, it's important to recognize that ionic compounds are compounds made of ions. And again, ions are atoms like an iron ion has a charge, because that's what an ion is, an atom that has a charge due to uh, an imbalance between the number of protons and electrons. Okay? We know that we can look at the periodic table and identify how many protons iron has. Right? So I look for iron on here and I see, oh, it's, it's element number 26. So that tells me that iron has 26 protons. Well, then, I can then sit and think for a second, okay, what that plus two charge means then is that there is more protons than electrons by two, so that 26 protons, there must be only 24 electrons, right? Um, and other, other kinds of ions have negative charges. For example, here's a chloride ion, and notice how or our ions that have negative charges, or our monatomic ions. So if you take an atom, a non-metal, and make it an ion, then you change its name from chlorine, for example, to chloride, or fluorine to fluoride, or so sulfur to sulfide, right? You always end it in I. So this is now, this chlorine atom gained an electron and became a chloride ion. So this chloride ion, I can tell, again, by looking at the periodic table, that chlorine has 17 electrons, sorry, 17 protons and 17 electrons, but now that I've given it an extra electron, that negative charge, mean it had, means it has 18 electrons, okay? We also have been introduced to the fact that there are what we call polyatomic ions, polyatomic ions. So, for example... Uh, this polyatomic ion, nitrate, nitrate, uh, you know, sometimes it's just the name, and when we see the name of a polyatomic ion, it's our job to pull out our polyatomic ion sheet. I'm going to look for nitrate here. Uh, let's see, where is the nitrate? Uh, NO. I guess NO3. Oh, yeah, that's right. NO3 minus. There it is right there. NO3 minus. So, move this out of the way here now. So, we got the nitrate ion is NO3 minus. It's a polyatomic ion. So, we have to be aware that we have some polyatomic ions out there. This one specifically contains one atom of nitrogen, three atoms of oxygen, and all their electrons, but then one extra electron as well. All right. We've also learned that when we're combining or naming uh, our ionic compounds, it's just the name of the cation and the name of the anion. And our, our model is this one here, NaCl, because a lot of people know that already from, I don't know where they all know it from, but we seem to know it. Um, do you know what the name of that compound is, NaCl? Uh, <clears throat> sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Very good. And now some people will say, it's sodium chloride, oh, that's a salt. I know what that is. That's a salt. Well, what we also want to make sure we recognize moving forward is that in chemistry class, all ionic compounds are called salts. All ionic compounds are called salts. So yes, this is a salt. It's not the only salt, though. 
Okay, um, and then if we have an ionic compound like this one, CO, whoops, try again, an ionic compound like this one, COSO4, all right, we can look for the names of these ions. This one's a polyatomic ion. This one's a, a, seeing a monatomic ion. It's just one element. Um, do you, can you find the name of that one there? The CO? CO. Or do you know it already? Okay, yeah, it's number 27. Calcium. Cobalt. I, cobalt. Cobalt. Okay. Cobalt. Good. Good. Now, element 27, cobalt. Now, this SO4, can you see that on the polyatomic ion chart? Now, I knew it was a polyatomic ion because yeah. it had multiple elements. Can you see what that because one Because we, how, how do we know again? Well, because it's not a single element, right? It has a sulfur oh, right, or right. oxygen. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking for SO4. Uh, sulfate. Sulfate, very good. Now, um, let's see, I'm trying to pull it over here real quick. Well, no, wait, that's not right, is it? That is right. Well, I'm looking at sulfite, but there's right. sulfate. Yeah, it is sulfate. It okay. is sulfate. Now, the polyatomic ion chart is critical for us in naming this compound because we yeah. need to know the charge. We need to know the name of the sulfate ion, first of all, but we also need to know the charge. And sulfate ion has what kind of a charge? It has a uh, two minus, two all negative. Right. Yeah, so I'm gonna write up here the sulfate ion, the two minus charge there, okay? Yeah. And that then helps us know what the charge on the cobalt ion is in this case. What is the charge on the cobalt ion if the sulfate has a two minus and in yep. the compound that they provided for us, it's one cobalt for every sulfate. So that means that the charge on the cobalt must be what? Four? No, it has to be the same. Oh, the charge, the charge. Yeah. Yeah, plus, yeah. Plus two, Okay, right? plus, plus two. two. Because the sulfate the, uh, is the minus two. We know two. that. Go ahead. Okay, so we know that because it's got to balance out, right? That's right. It has to balance out. And because, oops, the sulfate, I forgot the four there. The sulfate has a minus two charge, and the cobate, cobalt then has to have that plus two charge. And that is important for naming this compound because cobalt is a transition metal, right? So if cobalt being a transition metal, that means there's multiple possible charge states. Therefore, we have to name this compound appropriately so nobody, or so people know what we're talking about when we verbalize it, right? So what is the name of the compound? How are we going to tell people which charge state this cobalt sulfate is? Uh, I'm just guessing cobalt 4? No, it's cobalt 2. Cobalt 2. two. Okay, because of the charge? That's right. The number is what the charge is. So you're telling the person when you say cobalt 2 sulfate, you're telling them that this is cobalt with a plus 2 charge interacting with sulfate. Okay? Now, so we write it as a Roman Roman numeral? That's right. We write it as a Roman numeral. Now, let's try this, for example. If I say I have uh, manganese, okay. whoops, manganese, uh, that's a four, Roman numeral four, manganese four, Oxide. Manganese okay. for oxide. And we want to write down the chemical formula for this compound. Okay, so what do we do? Manganese. Do you know Manganese. The, yeah, can you find it on there? It's number 25. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's going to give up uh well am I looking? it's a transition metal right it's number 25 oh okay. i'm looking at the wrong one never mind <laughs> it's number 25 yeah okay and so 
That's why they called it manganese four oxide. So we got okay. MN and then the oxide the, ion, the oxide ion, what do you think? Is is uh, number eight? Yeah, element eight is just oxygen. So okay. oxygen, MNO. Now we have to make sure we have the right number of manganese and the right number of oxides, right? So okay. what does the oxide ion, what kind of charge does the oxide ion have? It would have a uh, negative charge. A negative what? A negative two. Negative two, that's right, negative two charge. And the manganese, what does our manganese charge have on it? Uh, well, we know that it's a four, so it would have a, a positive four. Very good. Manganese has a positive four. So if I have one manganese with a positive four, how many oxide with a negative two am I going to need? A uh, uh, two. Yeah, I'm going to need a second need one, aren't I? And so that tells yes. me that the chemical formula has to be MnO2. All right. That's the chemical formula for manganese four oxide. Does that make sense? Yeah, that part makes sense. But now where you lost me is um, up above we have manganese mm -hmm. four uh, in parentheses in Roman numerals. Okay, yeah. Oxide. And so which one I... I'm guessing they're both appropriate in certain situations. What? The way we write it. When do we write the four, you mean, the number here? Yes. We only do that when we're dealing with an element from our blue section here, or our transition metals, right? Okay. Our transition and so, metals. So the one below is was only an example, but... but we won't really write it that way, right? Which one? Manganese four oxide? Well, the MnO2. That is the that's the same thing. This is the chemical formula for manganese four oxide. Right. And so they both mean the same thing. Yes. But I'm trying to figure out which is the proper way to write it. Well, if it was a report, you could write it this way, but you could also write it this way. It doesn't well, matter. they're both acceptable? Yeah. I mean, in a chemical reaction, in a chemical reaction, you'd have to have it written as its chemical formula. So you'd have to go MnO2 plus NaCO, Na2CO3, for example. Then right? We'll the products that. here, manganese carbonate, uh, okay. like that, plus Na2. Oh, and then you'd have to balance this, right? So that would be our chemical formula. So you would have to write it out as a chemical formula there. You couldn't okay. write manganese oxide there, but if you're just writing it on right. the side of the bottle or whatever, you could do this or oh, you could do that. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay, so they're both appropriate just in a different setting. That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. okay, very good. So that's a little review on our uh, naming of ionic compounds, ionic uh, ions, right? Good, and you know, we'll, we won't remember that forever. We'll have to be reminded every once in a while, but we'll take turns, kind of take t opportunities to, to, to remind ourselves of the name of a given compound and uh, the charge on given polyatomic ions. All right. Now. Now, can I ask you another? Yeah, go ahead. It's a review question. So I remember, you know, like you said at first, way back, we said that the iconic, ionic, I'm sorry, ionic uh, compound was a metal and a non-metal, but then later on you gave an example, and I can't remember what it was, where it was two non-metals. Well, it's not two non-metals, but this is this is oh. the general example. Okay. NH4Cl, right? So this is a compound 
that doesn't contain metals. However, okay. that NH4 is an ion. It's an ion. And so you can look on our polyatomic ion sheet and find it up at the top there, NH4. It's the first one on the list. It's called ammonium. Ammonium. Oh, yeah. And so this compound would be called ammonium. And then the Cl ion is the chloride ion, a chloride. chloride. So this would be ammonium chloride. And it is made of ions. Therefore, it's an ionic compound, even though it doesn't contain a metal. All right. And, and, and how do we recognize um, it? Yeah, I guess that's why I'm asking. Yeah. We have to just. How do we recognize it as an ionic compound? We have to become familiar with this polyatomic ion, the ammonium NH4 ion. All also, right. just as a rule of thumb, any any uh, combination of a polyatomic ion will be a yeah an ion. an ionic compound. Right? That's right, because our, again, our new definition of an ionic compound is a compound made of ions. All right. Okay. Now. I hope you don't feel bad that I lied to you that ionic compounds are compounds that contain metal because that helped us recognize ionic compounds early on. Um, right. And if we were to say early on, an ionic compound is a compound made of ions, that wouldn't be very helpful because we didn't know what ions were yet. Right. But now that right. we know what ions are, we can recognize that ionic compounds are compounds made of ions. That's why we call them ionic. Right. And we're beginning to realize that there is uh, there are compounds made of ammonium, the ammonium ion, and that is an ion as well. So therefore, compounds made of that ion are also ionic compounds. Okay, okay good question. Now, do we have to balance that? Well, we would have to balance it, except for what's the charge on the ammonium ion? Uh, okay, it's uh, plus. Plus one. You always have to say the number on that charge. So it's okay, plus one. I did, okay, all I saw was a plus up here. And what's the charge okay, on the chloride ion? Okay. On the what? The chloride ion. Oh, yeah. That one I have to figure out. Use the periodic table. Yeah. Okay, that would be uh, minus one. Minus one. There we go. So it's it's already no wait. Let's see. So since we have four, that no, four, it's balanced. It's yeah, it's balanced, balanced already. Good. Yeah, that hydrogen is that four is with that hydrogen. Yeah. Okay. Very good. But here's one because you asked such a good question. I'm going to give you another question, another problem to work on here. Uh, what is the chemical formula? All right, we're looking for the chemical formula now. What is the chemical formula for ammonium carbonate? What's the chemical formula for ammonium carbonate? So NH, NH4. NH4 is the ammonium, very good. And then carbon. And we use carbon so so much that uh, I should know this, but well, um, there's I can't. It's not just carbon on the periodic table. Carbon oh, it's on not. Oh, carbonate. So yeah. Okay, it's in the back then. Okay. So C C O three. Very good. With with, with a minus two charge. That's right. A minus two charge. So what's the charge on the ammonium ion, NH4? Um it's a 
Just a, a one charge. Positive one. Positive, positive one. Yeah. So then, how are these going to come together? So we have uh, we need two of well, if we had two of those, the the two charges would match. If we had two of what? Well, if we had two of the nitrate. Oh, the ammonium. Ammonium, yeah. Yeah. So how do I say that I want two of those? What do I have to do? We would put two in front. Well, not in front, right? We put it down here, oh. right? And what do I this have to do right when I put it down there? Okay. I have okay. to put parentheses, right? Okay. Good. And then I just need the one carbonate, right? The CO3. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, that makes sense in the... Okay, but for clarification, the reason we're pointing the two down there and not in front here. Well, in front it would. Yes. Yeah, I see why it would because if we put it in front, it's it would change everything. It, right. The two would also apply to the CO three. That's right, because that's saying two of whatever this whole species is. Yeah. But now ammonium carbonate okay. means that I have two ions of ammonium and one ion of, the, of carbonate in this compound, ammonium carbonate. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, here's another question that's just as exciting, just as fun. <laughs> so let's see if you can answer this question now. What metal would be a reasonable candidate to replace the X in this ionic compound. X, PO4. X, PO4. Okay. So, I'm going to look at PO4 in the back here. Yeah, our polyatomic ion. Chart and there. that would be yeah, and that would be phosphate. So that's a phosphate ion with the minus two charge. Minus two is that what it says, or can you see it? So I think it's I a can't minus tell three. My... It's a minus three. Yeah, it is minus three. PO four with the minus three charge. Okay, so which of these metals? and we can try to find them on the periodic table and make that decision, which of these metals would have a plus three or could have a plus three charge? Could magnesium have a, a plus three charge? Uh, magnesium, no. Uh, no, it, it would have what kind of a charge? Uh, it would have a, uh, a minus charge. It would have a plus two charge. Magnesium? You see it number 12? Oh, I'm... oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it would have a, right. Good. Yeah, because it would have to give up two electrons. That's right. How about sodium? What kind of a charge would sodium form? Okay, sodium would also have a it's element it would 11. Have a plus, yeah, you will have a plus one charge. Plus one. Very good. So not sodium, not magnesium. How about element three, lithium? Okay. And lithium would also have a, a minus one. A plus one, right? I mean a plus one, right? Very good. How about SC, scandium? That's element 21. Okay, and that would have a a plus three. Yeah, scandium could have a plus three charge, couldn't it? So that would work. Yes, and so that's our answer. Scandium is our answer. Let's look at the last one, strontium. It's element 38. Okay. What kind of a charge is element 38 going to have? We have a, a plus two. A plus two. Outstanding. 
Way to go. So, so let me ask you this question. Yeah. Uh, because we could do this in increments of one, right? Uh-huh. To match, couldn't the first three that were just, well, not the first three, the ones that, like C. Yeah, lithium. Is uh, just, yeah, just one away. And have three of those? Yeah. So what's the chemical formula I, for lithium I phosphate? Know, probably right. What's the chemical so, formula for lithium phosphate? So it would be Li. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would write it with, uh, so we have a plus charge on top, one plus charge. And we would put in parentheses. Well, I don't know how you write it. I know the well, three goes outside the parentheses, right? The lithium ion. Lithium those. ion is a positive. The phosphate ion, PO4, what is it? What's the charge on the it's phosphate a, ion? It's a minus. Minus three. We always have oh. to say the number, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a minus okay. three. Minus three. And that's our, our okay. uh, polyatomic ion chart. Don't be afraid to right. pull that thing out and look right. at it and decide exactly how many, uh, what the charge is on the, the, the ion we're after, phosphate, right? Okay? Right. So um, now, how do these come together? And you said, couldn't you just have three of these lithiums? And that's right. You really? could. So then it would be lithium. I don't know how you write it. You would just say With the three, three right there. Right okay. there, PO4, right? Okay. And that would be our chemical formula. And again, the three is telling us that I have three lithiums here. Uh, there's only one phosphate, right? I don't need the parentheses because the number down there only applies to that element. So I don't need the parentheses. The parentheses are when well, we're dealing see. with with clusters or polyatomic ions like that. Right. So, so if we were dealing with the, what was the PO4 again? The phosphate? Yeah. The phosphate? Uh huh. Uh, and we were going to have like two of those, then we would print, put two in parentheses next to the four. Well, let's try this one. What is the chemical formula for magnesium phosphate? Okay. So, Phosphate by itself, we said was a PO4 with yep. a minus three, Good. minus three charge, right? And then magnesium, I have to flip this again, is uh, that's 12, right? That's number uh, 12 on the periodic. Yeah, element number 12. Good. Okay. So then that would have a plus two charge. Very good. Magnesium has a plus two charge. Now, how are these elements going to, or how are these ions going to come together yeah. so that they can balance each other out? Now, will we, will we do the cross at yeah. this point? The cross, yeah, we can do the crisscross. You can always do the crisscross, right? Okay, so then we will put the two in parentheses uh, by the four on the, I know I'm doing this kind of yeah. okay. backwards. Okay. And then we would have the magnesium and uh, with the three underneath. Very good. That's it. That's our chemical formula for magnesium phosphate. And just a reminder, we don't need to say magnesium two phosphate here. Like we didn't have to say lithium one phosphate. Because lithium and magnesium are representative elements, right? They're okay. here in these first two cool. columns. There's only one charge state that they can have when they form ionic compounds. Elements in this transition sure. metals, these are the ones that might have additional charge sure. states. Okay. Okay, very good. All right, so um now let's turn our attention to naming molecular compounds 
naming molecular compounds. Okay. Okay. Um, can can yeah. we pause for just a second? Sure. Sure. All right. Good stuff. So, naming molecules, molecular compounds. All right. Now, molecules, we can recognize a molecule because it has no metals in it. It's made up of just non-metals. And again, we call them molecules because they are molecular in nature. But that's lame because if you don't know what molecular refers to, then who cares that you understand that molecules are molecular in nature? Molecular means that they go around in their little clusters of the packets that the chemical formula indicates. So for example, a molecule of water is just that. It goes around as oxygen and two hydrogens, and that is its active unit. That's the unit that interacts with uh, other compounds, right? Um, H2O2, another compound, right? Uh, hydrogen peroxide, right? Um, it goes around in its little units like that, two oxygens and two hydrogens, all right? So these are molecular compounds. We can easily identify molecular compounds because they don't have metals in them. But we want to be able to name them because, and, and the reason why we have a, a different naming method, and it's not completely different, we're still using the names of the elements, but the reason why we kind of need uh, a different naming um, method is because uh, if I combine carbon and oxygen together, I might say, well, I can just call it carbon oxide, like we did with the ionic compound. The problem is you can get that and you can have that. So you can have carbon with one oxygen or carbon with two oxygen, all right? And so we need a method that will be able to distinguish these two, okay? And our method utilizes these um, Greek prefixes. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. Some of these we're familiar with. Uh, let's see, mono, a, a monocle, right? One eye, one eyeglass. <laughs> uh, a monocycle, a unicycle. They call it a unicycle. They don't call it a monocycle, do they? What's another one for mono? Mm, I don't know. I feel like there's another one that I'm, I'm missing. But I think that that's pretty straightforward. People don't generally forget mono. And di, I think that that one's also pretty straightforward. Tri, tricycle, right? Tetra is less straightforward. Do you have any way of thinking that you can remember tetra? Uh, just, just the video game, but that's going back some years. That's right. The video game. What's the name of that video game? I don't know. Tetris. Tetris. Tetris is the name okay. of the video game. And, you know, it's just a little video game where blocks come down and they're all in combinations of different, uh, fours, right? Blocks, different blocks, different blocks with four units in them. So. It's good to learn how to play Tetris just so that you can remember that Tetra refers to four. Penta, people generally are pretty familiar with a, a pentagon, the shape of a pentagon. And hexa, people are generally pretty familiar with a, a hexagon. So five and six aren't hard to remember. Hepta is a little bit hard to remember. Um, it's seven, but we don't really talk about heptagon or anything like that. Octa. Octopus, that's pretty easy to remember. Uh, Nona, not as easy. Maybe you can remind yourself of nano, which was 10 to the minus ninth nanometers for every, or 10 to the minus ninth meters for every nanometer, or 10 to the ninth nanometers for every meter, right? So that's one way. Deca, that's easy for people generally. Decade or decimal, okay? I'll tell you now how I remember hepta and nona, which are the two that we really don't have something good to remember. Um, uh, what I use to remember hepta 
is I use the month September because septa and hepta come from the same prefix. Uh, October, eighth month. Uh, November is the ninth month. Well, it used to be the ninth month before two more months were added to make it 12 months. We used to have a 10-month calendar. But that's where the month titles came from. October, November, sorry, September, October, November, December. Right? Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Seventh month, eighth month, ninth month, and tenth month. Uh, they got shifted back a couple months when, again, they shifted from a 10 month calendar to a 12 month calendar and put in a July and August, which was Julius and Augustus Caesar. So the months were named after July, Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. Um, and, you know, it fit the seasons better for most of the world. So we used a, a 12 month calendar. Um, but Septa, September became the ninth month instead of the seventh, and November became the eleventh instead of the ninth. So that's how I remember Hepta, by remembering September used to be the seventh month, and Nona because November used to be the ninth month, or the, uh, yeah, used to be the ninth month. Okay? Whatever it takes, um, we'll try to remember these Greek prefixes because they're necessary in naming molecular compounds. Another name for molecular is covalent, covalent. We'll talk about that word covalent more in the future. So we don't really refer to them a whole lot as covalent molecules, but you might have questions where they talk about covalent compounds. And so um, a molecular compound can also be kind of taught in terms of covalent compound. The, the term covalent essentially means co, same, valence, and it's referring to how they like to attain a noble gas electron configuration. So the valency of a molecule, or of an atom, the valency of an atom is referring to what it does to attain a noble gas electron configuration. And for covalent atoms, that means those two atoms want to do the same thing. So carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, they all want to gain electrons, right? So covalent molecules are going to be made up of molecules which do the same to attain a noble gas electron configuration. All right, so here is an example of a compound, hydrogen chloride. It contains hydrogen. It contains chlorine. There's no need to put a mono in front of these because there's just one of them. So hydrogen chloride, its chemical formula is HCl. Phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus pentachloride. What are the two elements here, Walt? What are the two elements? Uh, phosphorus. Phosphorus and? And then uh, chloride. Chloride. Very good. And the penta goes with the chloride. So how many chlorines are we going to have? Five. Five. So PCl5 is phosphorus pentachloride. Good. Triselenium. Okay. Yeah, question? Uh, yeah, so the five is going to reflect on the chloride. Back on, well, I see the five on chloride, but uh, right there. Is that 5CO? Yeah, PCL5. PCL5. Oh, okay. It, it, okay, phosphorus is S. Is that 5 there? or The, the phosphorus? That's, I see 1P. Yeah, that's then 1P. What's... And then CL, and then there's 5 CLs. Oh, that, that 5. Oh, that's 5 CL. Oh, okay. That's okay. a 5 in front of the CL. Showing us that I have 1 phosphorus, 5 chlorine, they're going to come together. To okay, and then that's the final one. Okay, yeah. got it. BCL5. Okay, what do you think? What's the chemical formula going to be for triselenium dinitride? Triselenium dinitride. Okay. So, three selenium. Yeah. And two nitride. Two nitrogens. Very nitride. good. Yeah. Nit nitrogens? Yeah. yeah. Nitrogens, which are nitride. I mean, in the end, it's going to be called 
triselenium dinitride, SE3 and 2. Good. Good job. Now, we never put mono on um, the first element. If there's, if there's just one of it, we just start with that first element. And you'll only sometimes see it on the second element if there's only one of them. Okay? So the mono can come and go. So don't get too uh, excited about making sure that mono is around. And sometimes there will be a conjunctive word where, like carbon monoxide, the O won't show up twice in mono and oxide, right? So we have carbon monoxide here. Okay. So tell me, can you give me the, the name for this compound? SCL2. SCL2. Uh, sulfur chloride. Sulfur chloride. Sulfur, I'm sorry, sulfur uh, dry chloride. Sulfur, what's the number there? It's a two. Can you see that? Yeah. So would that be dry? That's dye. Dye. Very good. Dye. Sulfur dye. Sulfur dichloride. Excellent. HF? Uh, hydrogen phosphate? F is element nine it's oh nine okay chloride oh okay so hydrogen fluoride hydrogen fluoride very good well it is fluoride yes okay fluoride uh n2o5 n is nitrogen o is oxygen so we've got two uh, nitrogens, N2. Okay. Yeah. Di Good. Dinitrogen. Dinitrogen. And then uh, penta uh, oxide. Very good. Very good. Excellent job. Dinitrogen penta oxide. All right. That's probably good for today. Okay. Okay.